All right, this is gonna be 1.2 primitive data types and variables. Uh, this lesson's gonna be a little bit longer than most of the lessons you'll see on primitive data types online. And the reason why is I feel like most of the time they just kind of gloss over the details and go, here's how you make a variable. And I really wanna dive into some of the nuances, uh, especially for when you're looking online and you see all these other things than just these simple variables that were made. Now, before we dive into those primitive data types, you're gonna see in this lesson two things. You're gonna see single line comments, all right? And they start with two slashes. And a comment is something that is ignored by the compiler. Uh, it's more just for coders to kind of leave messages to themselves and to other coders when they're on teams on like what this code does and, and what it means. Now, of course, uh, if you're writing a lot of stuff, just doing two slashes for a single line isn't always enough. If you do a slash star, and then a star slash to end it, you can do a multi-line comment and you should see both of those in this lesson. Now, when talking about primitive data types, you're gonna see a lot of different stuff from different languages. And you're gonna come across this conversation about statically typed versus dynamically typed. Now on the left, a statically typed language, is which, we'll, which is what we'll be doing for C and C++, is a language that requires you to declare the data type before you use it, okay? Uh, and these are checked at compile time. Now, an example at the bottom here is int x equals 12. We had to declare that it was an integer with int, give it a name, and assign it a value, end it with a semicolon, right? This is very different than JavaScript and Python, right? They are dynamically typed languages that do not require you to, to declare what data type your variables are, uh, they're kind of figured out, right? Like a, a 12 is a 12, we know that's an int, so JavaScript is gonna go, let's just use var for everything to say that you're making a variable, sorry, and we can make sure it's an int, right? And Python the same way, right? X equals 12, you don't even have to put var there for Python, you don't even have to put a semicolon for Python. Very different, and both have their pros and cons. Generally speaking, a statically typed language will save you performance when your program is being run because it's not deciding on what these types are. And a dynamically typed language will take a little bit more on the runtime because it has to figure out what these things are. But for small programs, you shouldn't see much of a difference. Okay, primitive data types, variables, right? Uh, primitive data type is the smallest represent of data that we can have, right? They're built in and you can see that sometimes they're called fundamental, or excuse me, fundamental values, right? Uh, these are just simple things, a three, a 12.3, a single character like a C, a true or a false, and there's a couple other types, but they're really simple pieces of data, okay? They're not very complex. We're not stringing a bunch of data together. We're not even looking at strings. It's just simple, okay? Uh, we have the integers, right, which are, are short, int, and long, and there's more, but these are the most common, and they're different in size. A short will only be two bytes, and if you remember, a byte contains eight bits, so that's a 16-bit number, which should give you the most at like positive 32,000 and negative 32,000, approximately. An integer, uh, which we use for INT, is four bytes, which means that's 32 bits, so you're getting right about I think about 2.1 billion up to 2.1 billion positively and down to negative 2.1 billion. And then you have long, which is eight bytes. This is a 64 bit, much larger, okay? Now all of these can have, and I'll, I'll get to the other ones, but all these can have what's called modifiers. So modifiers are keywords that go before you declare the type where we can make them larger, smaller. We can say that we want them signed or unsigned. So signed would be that they could be positive or negative and unsigned would be that it's just all positive, or we can say short and long. So we can make them bigger, we can make them smaller, okay? Uh, so you might see things like uh, you know, a long int, or a short int, or a long long. Um, most of the time, like simple programs, a short int or a long will get you by just fine, okay? The next ones are called floating point, these are our primitive data types that contain decimals, right? So we have a float and we have a double. The float is only four bytes, the double is eight, and you can tell that the significant digits is very, very different, all right? 
Uh, a float is only six. A double gives you 10 significant digits. This is often referred to as a double precision floating point. Uh, I mostly use doubles, unless you were doing something where you really needed to save four bytes every single time you made a decimal. And then the last two that we're gonna go over are char and boolean. A char is a single character. It's a one byte data type, and we're talking about like a lowercase a, and that would be it, or an uppercase a. And then a boolean is same thing. It's one byte, and we actually just use bool. We don't put the E-A-N when we declare it. Uh, and it's just a true or a false, which we can write the word true or false, or we can put a zero or a one. Now, how do we make a variable? Now, this is a lot of information here because I wanted to cover it all, all right? You put modifiers first, which are optional. Then you write the data type, which you can see would be an int, a boolean, a char, or a double. And sorry, those modifiers would be signed or unsigned, short and long. And keep in mind, signed and unsigned, these will work with int, they'll work with char, they'll work with double. They're not going to work with boolean, okay? Uh, short and long is not gonna work with char or boolean, it's gonna work with int and double. So the modifiers can be pretty tricky. I would always look those up before using them. And they are optional. And then you have your identifier, which is really just a name, okay? And you can see I've given some examples. We can put just the word name. We can put name underscore here. We could do camel case, which is name where we'd use a capital letter to separate. Or, you know, we can put numbers at the end if we want. But there's a couple things we can't do when we give it a name or an identifier. Uh, we can't start it with a number. It cannot contain punctuation symbols. And it cannot use the same name multiple times. So once I create a variable called name, I cannot re-declare something called name. Okay. Um, all right. And then we use the assignment operator. So we use an equal sign to assign a value to that identifier, uh, which, you know, helps it create a space in memory and give it a name to find it. And that's where you just put your actual data after the assignment operator, a one, a true, a C, you know, 3.14. Those have to match the types that you declared. Okay. All right. So enough talking, let's do an example so we can see what this looks like live. So I got a file here, primitives.cpp, up in VS Code on Ubuntu 20, and we're just going to put some things together to kind of go over those concepts. So the first thing we need to do for this one is include our IO stream so that we can get those input-output functionality. Uh, as you notice, this that line does not have a semicolon, and that's okay for headers. And we're always going to need our main function, so it's going to be int main parentheses with an open brace and a close you can see it just popped up and then we have our you know our body of our function here where we can put all our code so we saw single line comments ooh, and then we have our multi-line multi-line comments and these can be super helpful for taking notes to yourself okay i highly recommend writing all of this down exactly how you see it to get that feel and that experience of typing in the code, not just watching it, all right? Now, so those were the first two things we went over. The next thing we went over was primitive data types, some basics, and let's go ahead and make a couple of those. So we're gonna have uh, an integer, we'll call it, well, int for declaring our data type, right? We'll call it integer, which is all right to do. Throw in that assignment operator, give it the value 12. Let's make a char and we'll call it character equals and a char when you set that type uh, or that, that value, you need to put single quotes around it like that and a semicolon. Let's make a bool for boolean and we'll call it boolean <laughs> equals and I'm just gonna do a one for true, okay? Now you could put all these are acceptable, you could put false or zero. Those will be the same exact thing. Or you can put true or one. All, you know, all four of those are fine, all right? And then we need, let's do a double. And we'll call it decimal. Let's give it a 12.14, all right? Now, I'm gonna give this a run in our compiler. So I'm opening up my terminal here and I'm gonna call the compiler with G++. I'm gonna send it the file name, 
primitives.cpp. It must have compiled successfully. And so I'm going to run it. So dot a dot out. And nothing should happen, right? We haven't printed anything at this time. Uh, so let's get these printed out so we can see what that looks like. All right. Let's see what we got going on here. Okay. That's weird. All right. <clears throat> so we're going to use our standard library and C out. And we send those area or excuse me, those arrows towards C out. And I'm going to just send it the integer. Okay. Put some more arrows to kind of get the direction going here and then SCD and L to kind of clear that buffer and do the return line. And I'm going to just do this again for all of them. Now I know that you'll probably have seen ways to not have to type all those SCDs and the double colons. Uh, I always like to do them for beginners just because it helps them see where it's coming from. When you do too many uh, using namespaces, it can be kind of confusing that they're not just these built-in things that exist. Okay, so there we go. All right, so let's run the compiler again. And no errors and boom, 12C1 and 12.14 printed out. And as we, you know, you saw that we put multiple, you know, pieces here by linking them with the double arrows we can continue to do that, right? So I could have just put character here and put more arrows if I wanted to print it out again on that line. That's totally fine to do, okay? So let's actually jump back to our PowerPoint. Let's go over some more advanced things with primitives so that we can see a little bit more about how to use these or different ways to declare and initialize them. The next thing we need to talk about is declaration and initialization. So declaration is everything to the left of the equal sign. And it's kind of exactly as, as it sounds. We're declaring what it is, okay? We're declaring its modifiers, its data type, and its name for the compiler, okay? At the declaration step, the compiler is going to go out and kind of reserve the appropriate amount of space. We saw that short, int, long, they were all a different amount of bytes, and the compiler needs to know you know, how many bytes do I need to reserve for this, okay? The, everything to the right of the assignment operator is initialization, okay? That's where we actually create it and give it a value, all right? So those bytes get filled in with the appropriate zeros and ones necessary for that value. You can do declaration and initialization many different ways. We can declare it separately on its own line and then initialize it later. Uh, in the video, the in the code that we just did, we declared and initialized all on the same line, which I think is probably the best choice. But there are some situations where you might want to declare before you initialize. The other thing is the size of operator. This is a pretty handy built-in feature where we can send it a data type, and it'll tell us the amount of bytes that that data type needs. Okay, um, I know that that sounds silly, right? Like a short was was what, two bytes, and it should always be two bytes. But depending on your system, your operating system, or maybe your CPU, you could have a different amount of bytes for that uh, data type. Or if you're stacking in a bunch of modifiers and you wanna know, hey, how many bytes is this? You could use the size of operator for that. So let's do some examples so we can see what that looks like in practice. All right, so this is our file from before. We're going to work on our declaration. So we're gonna declare some values without initializing it. And I'm gonna throw in some modifiers also. So let's do a long int and we'll call it long integer. And we still need to end with a semicolon for that statement. Now, I really like to do the underscores. I'm not a big fan of camel case but you can use whatever you want. Just remember you can't put a space there. Once you do a space, it would think that this long was you know, a type, okay? And now if I print this out, so let's go and print that out. You would think that there would be an error, but I get a zero right there. Now I didn't do a new line because I didn't do end L, but when you, when you declare something, it's gonna have a default value. Okay, 
So make sure you give it a value later, which I can do now. So watch, I'm going to initialize. I want to go long integer, which I don't have to put a data type now because it already has one and I can give it, you know, a really, really big value. All right. And let's print this out again. And I'm going to use those uh, end L's this time so we can clear the buffer and get that new line separate those two I uh, compile run and you can see that now I've updated it but I only declared it a single time okay and I only initially a single time but I did it on a different line all right the other thing is the size of operator all right and this is pretty unique when I use the size of operator I pass it a type so I'm going to go int and let me actually add some more so how about we throw in a string here? I'm an int of size. Oh, yeah, let's do that. And throw it in like that. Okay, let's give it a compile. And I have an error. I left out a semicolon. Let's try that again. Give it a run. And you can see I'm an int of size Four, which would be four bytes. Now you can do a lot of testing with this. How many bytes is a long int? And we see eight, right? Let me see if I can stack another long, a long, long int. And it's still size eight, so that would have done nothing there, okay? But this is the size of operators are gonna be super helpful if you really need to be specific with how many bytes something is going to be, okay? So this is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we learned about primitive data types, how to declare, initialize them, print them out, uh, how to do the declaration and initialization separately, and our size of operator. Last thing, almost forgot, uh, I have a quick code for you guys, and I think it's very important that after you learn something that you try to do it. Uh, it just really helps you remember it. Okay, you need to experience code to get better at it. Uh, so I want you to do a couple things. Okay, I want you to create a variable for each primitive data type and initialize it with a value. So that's seven variables. I want you to print that value out and print out how many bytes it has with the size of operator. So that should be seven print statements. So you should be using one of those C outs uh, and using as many of those directional operators as you need to put everything on one line uh, and then I want you to make another variable for each primitive data type except for bool and I want it to include uh, a modifier assigned and unsigned along a short so that should be six variables you should have a total of 13 variables and then you should do this yeah like I said with only single C outs for each one so 13 variables 13 print statements now these quick codes are gonna be pretty easy at first you're getting the hang of C++, but as we go down the line, they will start ramping up in difficulty and also enjoyment.